After this video, you'll be able to learn faster, improve your memory and recall at any skill in just 20 hours. What's happening self-helper? It's Vikram here, your coach to becoming the best version of yourself. If you're looking to get better and improve yourself in any aspect of your life right now, then this channel holds the solution. So make sure you subscribe and turn on bell notifications to never miss another video. Competency at anything comes much sooner than you would think. If we hack and shape the learning process in the right way, we can get really good at something relatively quickly. So which one of these are you? Jack of all trades or master of some? Well, even though you may take a few years to master a skill, at the end of this video, I will tell you how you can work towards mastery. However, right now, instead of mastering something, let's just focus on getting really good at it first. You'll learn how to systematically develop a skill and climb up and past your own learning curve in just 20 hours. This video will be a review of Josh Kaufman's book, The First 20 Hours. I read this book recently and I highly recommend you read it too because it taught me how to hack the learning process and get better at something really fast. And I believe if you read and implement these in your own life, you will see a big transformation in yourself too. I've left a link to the book in the description box below. So how's this video going to be broken down? The first part will have 8 steps from the book by Josh Kaufman himself and I will be incorporating another couple of my own steps and learning techniques to better shape and sustain the change that you are going to experience after this video all the time getting closer towards mastery. Now what do you know about the learning process? Well, it can be implemented to creating a new skill entirely or improve upon something that you are already into and looking to get better at. So you may be looking to learn photography with your new camera or improving upon something within your photography skill set like photographing landscapes or improving upon your editing technique. The application is endless as you will find out with further examples. Begin by specifying and defining exactly what you want to accomplish. Decide the goal and target performance level. You start this off by doing something unconventional by imagining disaster. The thing is, any new skill seems overwhelming at first and you feel like giving up sometimes after just a couple of tries. So get this mental barrier out of the way as soon as possible by setting your own target performance level. Visualize yourself implementing your target performance skill and picture how you will be using it in the next few weeks. At this point, imagine that situation being a complete disaster. This leads into step number two. If the global skill is the main skill, let's say playing an instrument like the guitar, then the sub-skills involve things like learning melodies, chord shapes, different tonalities, etc. So separate the global skill from the sub-skills. By imagining disaster, we can picture the worst possible situation and we can tell ourselves that we can move past it. Because in reality, the worst case scenario is failure. So get that fear of failure out of the way as soon as possible. Now, as we find our way out of this situation, we're able to get into a more motivated mindset and we allow ourselves to discover ways or find sub-skills that are going to help aid us in developing that global skill. What comes next? You practice the most important sub-skills first. So put them in serial fashion and label what you believe is most important among the sub-skills to master first. So let's say you're trying to get better at preparing for an exam. You would want to follow a serial fashion to arrange things that would better aid development of your sub-skill as shown on the screen. Remember, every task within a subskill can always be broken down into simpler portions. The goal is to understand how to approach the learning process and yield faster results. Step number three, know just enough. Now that you know what you have to do, you need to know how you're actually going to do it. Research the skill just enough to accomplish, but not so much that it becomes a burden. Typically, this involves more practice than study. The purpose behind studying a skill this way is to realize if you're actually doing something wrong and how to fix it faster than you typically would. So let's say you are planning to travel to China. A typical way of learning their language would be to read a book or two on how you can speak the language. But a more realistic and effective way of doing this would be to maybe watch some tutorials on YouTube on how you can actually speak and communicate more effectively. 
Why do we do it this way? Dr. Stephen Krashen states this thing called the monitor hypothesis. And according to it, learning is valuable only if it allows you to plan, edit, and correct yourself while you practice. If we break down what we want to learn into chunks and find an optimal way of studying something quickly, we end up saving valuable time. So once you practice, you find yourself specific questions that you want to go back and study to help give you specific answers. A great way to save time is to talk to coaches or mentors or any other source really that can provide you with some constructive criticism. So the essence of this step is to learn enough about the skill to execute and self-correct effectively. Step number four, build your cognitive and motor skills through struggle and sleep. For improved motor skills, practice something before going to sleep and that will promote consolidation of the information that you've learned. An example of this would be practicing an instrument at night and being able to play it better in the morning. We also aim to improve our thinking with memorization techniques like space repetition reinforcement using flashcards and providing feedback to better remember things for a longer time. Again, doing this before sleeping helps consolidate better. So what does this actually entail you do? Instead of those long boring practice sessions, we put our effort into short bursts which are followed by sleep. So this is called struggle and sleep. By doing this, you dramatically improve your ability to improve a skill. Sleep consolidates and encodes what we learn during the day. Motor skills are learned and most effectively reproduced if they are learned within four hours of falling asleep. The thing is, you're still going to have to work for this. And this is the struggle part of the equation. Casually practicing something will get you casual and ineffective results. So there has to be something of a game plan when you're going to do this. For rapid improvement, the more intervals you spend practicing this struggle and sleep equation, the faster you'll see improvement. Imaginary practice needs to be reinforced by actual physical practice of the skill. So what you need to do in this step is actually sit down and work. There is really no magic to this part. Question whether it is actually worth the time and effort that you're putting in. If it is, then do it. If it isn't, don't. Go do something else. Why do we do this? We want to associate the thing that we are learning with hard work while we are actually working. Remember, the technique and approach we are applying to the way we learn something is the most important thing here. This will translate into the final product that we eventually come out with. So sit down and focus on the task at hand. Step number six, remove and eliminate barriers that prevent practice or delay good practice. Switch off your TV, your phone, or even close the door. Whatever it takes to prevent you from getting distracted. It goes without saying that guiding your attention and concentrating at the task at hand in this way will improve your overall learning. Another thing you can do is add visual cues. Keep your object of practice like your instrument or your study material in front of you or around you where you're very likely to see it. This will indicate to you that it's time to practice without having to test your willpower and make the decision for you to practice that much easier. Step number seven, pre-commit to practice for a certain length of time. Let's say at least 20 hours. How would you do this? It's by making an honest commitment to work hard while you're actually doing the task. This way, you'll be able to accomplish the sub-skill goal that you have set. Learn to work effectively by making behavioral changes that stay and need less willpower than usually required to actually get started. The next step is to practice regularly. Mark your calendar and have a target date in mind by when you plan to accomplish your goal and start working towards it. Have a minimum of two 20-minute practice sessions for at least one month every single day, morning and night. Morning prevents distractions and doing it in the evening or at night will increase the likelihood of consolidation of information that you've learned while you sleep. If you keep at this systematic and sustained effort for 40 minutes in one month, you would have accomplished your 20 hours of practice and become really good at that skill. So guys, that's more or less what the book says. I encourage you to read it and get the full picture. 
check out the description box below for the link. And now it's time for my bonus tips as promised. Step number nine, build yourself a routine and decide where you're going to go and how you're going to use your newfound skill long term. Doing this will not only benefit you in a number of ways, it'll also leave you feeling amazing. When you create a routine and you go about your thing while you learn, sometimes you experience a state of hyper-focus called flow, also known as being in the zone. Think of how an artist or musician has a day when their inspiration turned into productive work and eventually into a masterpiece. Or let's say you just got a lot of work done in a really short amount of time because you were completely into it. Sportsmen also experience this when they get into a good rhythm of play. This is a mental state of having an energized focus towards what you're doing. Though we can't always create the feeling of flow, there are some things we can do to increase the likelihood of it happening. What are they? These include being mindful when you're not thinking about the past or the future and you're completely in the present in this moment right now. Next, you make sure that you are completely involved in what you're doing by learning to focus, getting rid of any distractions that may be around you. And lastly, learn to enjoy the process. Your failures and successes are a part of the transformation. Try and stay positive and the flow will come to you. Now you've gotten really good at your skill. You're strongly motivated and you're now looking to master it. So whenever you stick it out and work at it every day, you tend to reach a plateau or a roadblock to where you want to get. You may not break through it today, tomorrow, or even a month or a year from now. But the mindset that you need to create is that of constantly looking to get better at that skill and trying new ways to get there. That's what will eventually get you to breaking past your limit with anything. So what's the key to mastering any skill? Mastery comes from believing that there is always something more to do, knowing that there is more to accomplish than there was previously and learning a different, better way to do the same thing. Don't ever settle. You never really perfect something. You just learn a better way of doing something through training and having insights to better that skill. We all learn differently. And this method of learning will be an effective addition to your skill arsenal. So educate yourself, get coached by the right person, consolidate every day and look to get better. Soon you'll find yourself using your skills to conquer challenges and overcome mental barriers that you previously thought were impossible to cross. Now let me know which tip you found among these to be the most helpful in the comment section below. Make sure you leave a like if you found the video useful and be sure to share it on Facebook and Twitter so that other people get inspired by this. Also, follow me on Facebook and Instagram for more content and regular updates. Oh yeah, and don't forget to subscribe and check out some of my other videos. This is Vikram signing off and I'll see you in the next session.